From the dark side of the moon comes my review of Transformers Dark of the Moon Crank Case. And here is Crankcase in his SUV mode. Very aggressive looking. You can see the whole body of the car has been raised above the ground. Uh, so you've got this big aggressive looking gap between the body and the, and the wheels. And you've got the Decepticon symbol there, as well as over here. And of course you can't miss the giant mech tech weapon. It plugs into one of two mech tech ports on the top of the vehicle. And if you pull back on this lever here, you get that action. Which, you know, I know it's a gimmick, it's large, it's out of place, but I really like doing that. <laughs> so anyways, I will take this off and put it to the side. And uh, one of the other features of the vehicle mode, as we take a look at the bottom here of the vehicle, you can extend out these pinchers which uh, looks very outlandish, but, you know, I suppose if you were a Decepticon and you wanted to get through traffic during rush hour, this would be a great way to move people aside. Um, but anyways, I will put these back for now. Now, one of the things about these Dark of the Moon Deluxe class figures, and even the Voyagers, is they are small when compared to their counterparts in the Revenge of the Fallen line. So, case in point, I'll bring in Deluxe Class, Revenge of the Fallen Swerve. And basically, as you can see, you are comparing an SUV with a sports car. So, as you can see, the Dark of the Moon figure is quite a bit out of scale when compared to the Revenge of the Fallen Swerve figure, especially in alt mode. Now, as we'll find out later, as I transform this into robot mode, the robot mode is not actually as bad as the uh, alt mode in terms of scale. But there you go. Uh, look at the alt mode for crankcase. So let's get on to the transformation. Uh, you can, first thing you want to do is you want to take the front section here. It uh, pegs in. And you just want to grab onto it and pull it up like that. And the rear section here, pull it up, and it's on a hinge, and it goes forward like this. Uh, on mine, it's kind of loose, so it tends to fall back down, but uh, I'll get to that later. Uh, next thing you want to do, you want to take the legs, and basically fold them down like this, and separate. And the leg, uh, the actual feet transformation is pretty cool. If you take a look at the tires, they're actually on a slider type of mechanism. You want to slide it towards the inside of the leg, and there's a little cavity inside there where the leg, or the uh, tire folds up into, like that. And of course, you want to do the same thing on the other side. Push in towards the inside of the leg, and that tire just goes very, not very nicely into that recessed area. Now, for the feet. I'm going to take the, like the, the back of the vehicle down like this and extend out the claws. But then what you want to do is you actually want to take this. It's on a very long uh, swing arm. And you want to make sure you bring it all the way back so that it rests against the back heel like this. So when I first transformed it, I had it forward like this, and I said, well, that looks like a very long-looking foot, but you actually have to rotate it back so it kind of touches the heel there, and there you have one, one foot. And, you, of course, you just do the same thing on the other side. Uh, bring down the foot, bring out the claw, uh, make sure that tire is up there nice and tight, and rotate back like so. <clears throat> Uh, 
All right, so you've got the feet taken care of. Uh, the one thing, just a, little, a quick side note, is this piece does not move. As you can see, it kind of stands out on the bottom of the leg. I wished it would have rotated into a vertical position. It would have been nice because it would have made it would have made the leg more bulky down here, and this wouldn't be kind of sticking out like it does now. So this doesn't move at all. I wish it would rotate either way, whether it's this way or that way or whatever. It would have been nice to have this rotate into a vertical position. So moving over to here, uh, what you want to do is you want to take these doors and they're on a couple tabs, and you want to pull the tabs out, and then once you do that on each side. Uh, you should be able to pull out the arms. Well, actually, you might want to just let's see, pull that forward a little bit and rotate the arms out. Now, what happens with the arms is they actually get rotated up like this. Oops. And then you want to bring the arms down and around, and just on a ball joint. And you'll see there's a peg there and a peg there. It corresponds to a peg hole here and here. Uh, I'm bring the head up here, rotate, the, rotate that and get it out of the way. <clears throat> and the pegs and the peg hole should match up and snap into place pretty securely like that. Then you wanna take this back section here, on a double hinge so rotate it back like that and fold it against the back <clears throat> bring out the hands like that and then what they say to do is rotate up the door here, so you can, it goes doesn't go very far, but here's the position it's in when it's when it's coming from vehicle mode. So you want to pull it out and up a little bit. It's not much of a move, but up and against the shoulder, and bring the tire up like that. Uh, tire in the wheel. Same thing over here. Bring the, the tire in the wheel. And going back to the legs. There actually is a crotch piece here, and that's going to rotate up. And then you want to bring the legs down again, rotate the legs around. And as you can see, this piece keeps falling down. It's pretty loose. And just get everything else situated the way you like it. And then these come out, rotate around. I think that's the official look to them. And here is Crankcase in his most awesome looking robot mode. Uh, do a little 360 action for you here. And get him standing up a little straighter maybe. So for articulation, the head swivels. Now the head on mine is rather loose because I've not figured out a way to get the plate underneath the head to lock into the chest or however it's supposed to lock in place. Uh, when I watched Pia's review, he made a comment that it's supposed to be able to lock in place and I haven't figured out how to do that. Uh, I'm sure when the instructions come out with the actual retail release of this figure, hopefully that will be clear. But uh, anyway, uh, if I figure it out, I'll make an annotation in this video uh, letting you know how to do that. Um, so anyways, swivel at the head, uh, ball jointed shoulders, swivel at the upper arm, um, swivel or bend at the elbow, and then the hands can go in and out like that due to the transformation. There is no waist articulation, however the hips are in a ball joint, uh, there's a swivel at the thigh, and there's actually, if you take a look, there actually are two bends, one there and one there, 
at the knee area. So pretty nice articulation. And these can be, you know, you can rotate these out and put them in different positions. Uh, they have some, you know, playability as well. Uh, you can put them like that if you wanted to, for example. Um, but I'm just going to put them back how they were before. Now, uh, as you can see on the arms, you have a mech tech port here and there. So, of course, you could take the mech tech weapon that comes with a crankcase here and plug it into there. Um, but then if you have another deluxe sized um, Dark of the Moon figure, like I have Starscream, you could, if you wanted to, plug those weapons in there as well. Like that. So one of the selling points of this figure is the head sculpt with, of course, the dreads. Now, the dreads themselves are soft plastic, but uh, take a look at that very nice head sculpt right there. Incredible amount of detail, and of course, it's a very evil looking head. It does have red light piping, which I will attempt to show you. There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. I would say that makes the figure worth buying alone. Just a fantastic head sculpt. And even you can see there's a very nice detail in the chest area as well with that uh, sort of bronze gold. Uh, very nice. Uh, once again, a recommended figure when it comes out in retail stores. And here is my first and perhaps most important size comparison. As you can see, Crankcase is standing next to Deluxe Class Sideswipe from the Revenge of the Fallen line. And as you can see, there is really no great size difference between the two. Uh, they're very comparable in robot mode. And the funny thing about the Dark of the Moon figures, as I said before, is that their vehicle modes typically are much smaller than their uh, Revenge of the Fallen counterparts in alt mode. So if you keep in mind, again, we saw Swerve at the beginning. Swerve shares the same mold as Sideswipe. So, when you, so basically the point is, in alt mode, the Dark of the Moon figures are much smaller, but once you get them transformed into robot mode, as you can see here, they uh, stack up pretty nicely. So let's take a look at the next size comparison. Next up is Hunt for the Decepticons Ironhide. And you can see they match up pretty well, although I would imagine Ironhide should be much bigger. Uh, we haven't really seen the movie, of course, yet. We don't know if these are gonna be these two bots are gonna be in the same scene, but I'm thinking Ironhide might be a lot bigger. It's hard to tell because we don't know what the scale of this guy is in the actual movie. But just a little look at uh, comparison. I think a lot of people have this figure, so it uh, makes a nice comparison between the two of them. And just for fun, if you happen to have another Dark of the Moon figure, here I have Starscream. Uh, Starscream next to uh, Crankcase, just for fun. And finally, also just for fun, I will bring in Generation 1 Shrapnel. And I do that because, as you can see, I really see quite a resemblance to, or between, Generation 1 Shrapnel and Crankcase. You know, basically the pinchers and just the overall look of Crankcase's face being really, in my opinion, with the multiple eyes, uh, really insect-like or insectoid. So I'm just wondering how soon we'll see a Generation 1 inspired custom paint job for a Crankcase. I mean really, chrome out the pinchers here, uh, repaint it in a black and purple, uh, you know, chrome out the weapon, which I will go ahead and insert into Crankcase's arm here to complete the effect. And they even have similar looking weapons. I mean, chrome this thing out and you'd have a very nice Generation 1 inspired Crankcase. My final thoughts on Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Crankcase. When this figure hits retail stores, definitely pick it up. It's a nice, nice Transformer. The really key selling point for me 
is the head sculpt. A very detailed, very menacing looking, and very unique. So for the head sculpt alone, I would recommend picking up this figure. It's a deluxe class figure, so it won't set you back too much money. And the only thing I have issues with is if you look at the panels next to the lower portion of the leg, I wish those would rotate uh, into a vertical position. It would have been nice. It would make the leg or the lower leg look much more beefier and you wouldn't have that panel sticking out in the first place. Small, small gripe, but um, nonetheless a suggestion for improvement. And second of all, if you take a look at behind the figure, there is that section that keeps flapping down and it may be that this is, you know, this is a pre-release toy, so it may be improved on the actual retail release figure. So it may be a stiffer connection and you won't have that problem. Uh, all in all, a very, very nice figure and a very recommended figure when it comes out in retail stores. Well, thanks for watching. This has been Like It's 1985 with my review of Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Crankcase.